bam di para ping. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, what's new in the zoo with you? It's time for me to tell you the tale of a bright-eyed game developer and the cartoon carrot who had driven him to madness. How an off-handed comment, the promise of a Nintendo dev kit, and a sugar-filled stream launched him into a deep spiral. So, pull up a chair. I think I'll start us off at the beginning. The year was 2020. Britney Spears first appeared on the radio. Some boy band from the United Kingdom were about to tour the States for the first time. TV was still black and white. Or maybe mine was just broken. Everyone wore Tamagotchis on their Heelys, and Japan was starting to create this thing called anime. This was an age of idealism. This was an age of possibilities. This was an age. I'd look at the color orange and not yet see pixel art. An age before the adventures of Captain Kierat. Okay, all jokes aside, around that time, I've probably been streaming for a few months, speaking through a broken Razer headset to maybe three viewers who were there because they probably lost a bet. And I am so thankful they did. I love you guys. By then, I'd published my first game on Steam. Harold's Harem, The Neckening. Check it out on Steam. Hey, add it to your wish list. Why not? Do you like sweaters, coffee? How about shameless self plugs? I like at least some of those things. Links in the fancy box below. <laughs> Moving on. My understanding of pixel art was slowly improving. And to top it off, I'd finally uploaded a buggy proof of concept build for an RPG simulation game called The General General. This was my baby. I made it using Small Game Builder, essentially a 3D RPG maker. In the game, you're a clone, created by a transdimensional staffing agency to work odd shifts at a local grocery store. Here, the player had to balance their energy, their happiness, and their overall will to live. Get to know the people, go to a nightclub, become a beatnik, pay the rent, die. You know, your standard RPG. This was uh, my love song to Harvest Moon 64, but based on a city with a much darker tone. I put everything I had into this game. Something I discovered was gonna be a theme with me. For example, when I was developing Harold's Harem, I worked on the game for 10 hours a day, seven days a week no breaks. And honestly, it was just because I didn't want to disappoint the people with a subpar game. So when it came time for General General, I worked harder. In my head, as I uploaded that proof of concept, I thought only six people would see it. Less would even play it. I just wanted that handful of people to see that I put everything I had into it. I think I posted it on a Friday and I took the weekend off. What I found the following week, well, to be honest, I'm still shocked. On that week I released my proof of concept, an article was written about the game. Itch had the game on their main page and shared it on their Twitter. It was overwhelming, very overwhelming. It felt like a sea of people were invited to see my drawing on the fridge, and I, I was not prepared to say the least. To many of you, this may not seem like a big deal, but for me, it was too much because with more eyes on the project, I kept thinking, oh my God, I'm sorry it isn't better. I still have a lot to learn. Heck, I didn't really even understand how to say itch.io right. Itch.io, itch.io. Chai tea latte? I'll get it one day. After that added traffic, it brought a lot of feedback my way. Some kind, some not so kind. But one thing was made very clear, I loved making video games. But if I wanted to keep at it, I had to take it a little bit more seriously. 
My understanding in game development, pixel art, and overall design was very limited. So I learned as much as I could at the time, you know, watching videos, testing out ideas, improving the art. But the more I added to it, the more I understood how large of a project the general general would be. So I moved my project from RPG Maker to Smile Game Builder, Frankensteining old and new assets, and I kept doing that until one day I could see the game was suffering from the very same growing pains as I was. So I made a decision, and I thought it'd be okay to take a little bit of a break from the project and level up my skills a bit, and return to the general general with a fresh pair of eyes and a streamlined design. So I decided that as the game was receiving feedback, I would pause the project for maybe two months and try a couple of different engines and draw out a plan. That was the plan. Uh, that was the plan. Two months in, in and out. What I didn't plan on was the perfect spiral. Now, to those who follow the stream know that I am bad at sub goals. Harold's Harem was created as a part of a 30 day self challenge after the stream hit like a milestone for me of four subs. That's, that's right, four. I made a whole game because we hit a goal I didn't think we'd ever hit. So when it came to the topic of taking two months off, as we got some feedback from General General, I work on a side project, I set the goal to 50. Hey, it, it took a while to get four subs. I had plenty of time until I had to hit 50. <laughs> I surpassed that sub goal the next day. Marty, no! As for which engine I'd use, I tried a few. Unreal, Unity, Godot, Godot, Gogo, -go, <laughs> RPG Maker. I still wasn't sure which felt right. I often talk about game engines in the context of going on a series of blind dates. But after a few dates, a couple of weeks on and off with each of these engines, I still wasn't sure who I'd give my rose to. However, around this time was Christmas or as it's called in Canada, Hardcore Winter with Lights. So to my surprise, an incredible home skillet from the stream gifted me a Steam key to a little known game engine called Pixel Game Maker MV, as they also owned an extra copy and it became a kind of a fun idea to learn a new game engine together for this small two month project. I knew little about this engine. Aside from that it was an object-based programming system built around uh, a series of state machines. Immediately, the thing I liked about this engine was that it kind of felt like I was making a game with a toy. It was a total blast, but very limiting. But then that came to the real question, what kind of game would I make during my definitely two month break? I didn't want anything too long and I didn't want anything too short, but you know, something that would be completed in two months. Well. The answer came in the form of two words from the keyboard of Tosuke, one of the stream's muses. They made an offhanded comment that basically inspired this whole project. Little background. As many of you will learn or may have already known, I have two big vices. I take jokes a little too far and I spiral into things very easily. So when Tosuke retorted, ghost potato, in response to what a level up couch potato would be if they were a necromancer, it ignited a spiral in me, which I was not ready for. I laughed for a little longer than I care to admit. Ghost Potato? That sounded like a supervillain to some Saturday morning cartoon. Maybe based around a vegetable hero? Like some kind of Captain Carrot with his sidekick, Beat Boy? And that was it. The sketch was said, the joke was laid out. And the stream continued. And we just kept joking more and more about what that cartoon character would be, what his world would be like, how he would sound, and what would the level even look like? With that theme in mind, a goal being laid and a muse now committed, I soon took to my sketchpad, opened up my pixel art program, 
and fell into the void. Two months, I said. In and out. Two months. That was almost a year ago. Just want to say thank you to the wonderful patrons, to Huge Steve, Koramai, Star Princess, Bumper Sticker, and to the lovely Matsi Makes. I also want to take a, a moment to say thank you very much, Composi, for composing uh, this, this video's uh, theme. See what I did there? Also want to say thank you very much to the very talented Bunny Stick for uh, helping me out and becoming the, the official editor to this series. Without you, none of this would be possible. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you very much, everyone, and hope you have a wonderful day. <laughs> Fine, well, okay. Yes, I have a merch store. This is embarrassing. I'm not even prepared. Uh, maybe, maybe if you want to get merch, um, I'll put it below, but that's all. Okay, so that's it. That's it. Moving on out.